Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Once Upon a Crescent, a Muslim kids podcast. This podcast is a collection of original children's stories. I am your author and storyteller, Mrs. Hashmi. This is season three. I hope you have your seatbelts on because I'm planning on taking your imagination on a fun story time ride. Today's story is called A Bird's Eye View of Risk. But before we get into the story, let me go ahead and tell you what that new word risk means. Okay, let's imagine when Allah sent you in your mom's tummy, automatically a treasure chest called Risk opened. And this treasure chest had your name on it. This treasure chest called Risk has all the never ending supplies that you'll need in your journey of life to grow. Oh, and the best part of this treasure chest is that Allah is in charge of this treasure chest. How perfect, right? Allah will refill it, and Allah keeps track of all the good things inside that you'll need in your life. I mean, if Allah is in charge of this imaginary treasure chest called Risk, then psh, I'm going to trust that goodness is meant to come my way. There are so many examples of Risk in our life. For example, the good health in our body and mind. That's a goodness. For example, the specific meals that we eat and enjoy. That's a goodness. For example, the Eid toys and games. That is also a type of risk. For example, your comfy bed and your safe home. That is also a type of risk and goodness. Basically, any good in your life is a blessing, and that blessing is inside your treasure box called Risk from Allah. The thing to remember about Risk is that it only comes from Allah. He is Al Razak, the provider. Now, let's get back to our story. On a beautiful blooming spring morning, two birds sat perched on top of a branch. Peering into the house of their favorite human household. These two birds loved people watching. Shifa bird and Hera bird fluttered their wings in excitement. Ooh, ooh, the boys are almost ready to come out to the backyard. I wonder what kind of compost that they're bringing out today, Shifa said to her best friend Hera bird. Hera bird bounced on the tree branches as she watched two brothers slide open their backyard door. Chirping away, Hera exclaimed, Oh, I hope there's sunflower seeds in this pile like last time. These chirpy little birds loved coming to this backyard. The boys who live here would come out and dig a hole to place a pile of fruit and vegetable peels into the soil. Sometimes the pile would even have seeds and breadcrumbs. The pile of natural food scraps gets broken down in the soil to help the soil become rich and healthy. Shifa bird and Hera bird have been able to find more worms in the soil since the boys have begun this composting routine. Isn't it great that this family started gathering all their scrap leftovers? Huh, I wonder why they started this anyways, Shifa bird asked. Hera Bird went on to inform her friend exactly why those humans living in that house started composting. Shifa, it's because the mom is super serious about not wasting food in Ramadan. Oh, okay, that makes sense, yeah. Well, this new routine they have going on is great for us. Oh, here come the boys. Two brothers exited their backyard door, Muhammad and Dawood. They found their composting site and began to dig a hole for the scraps to go into. Shifa flew one tree branch above to get a closer look. The boys were busy with their own conversation to even notice Shifa bird and Hera bird nearby. Do you think we'll get Eid presents this year? Dawood asked his older brother Muhammad. Yeah, why not? Well, Baba doesn't have a job this year. And I don't know how Mama and Baba will even buy any presents if Baba doesn't have a job, Dawood stated. 
Hmm. Maybe we'll get something less expensive, but I think we'll still get something. Muhammad replied to his younger brother. Oh yeah? Like what? Daoud asked curiously. I don't know. I've never shopped for Eid toys. That's an adult thing to do. Muhammad said, looking slightly worried. Daoud continued with his train of thought. Exactly, and the adult in our family doesn't have a job, remember? <sighs> I wish Baba was still working for the museum. It was so cool visiting him at his workplace, and he would show us all those cool digging projects. <sighs> Daoud got quiet for a moment. Muhammad, I don't think we'll even be able to go to Mama's favorite restaurant this year for Eid. I mean, how will Baba even get the money to do our family Eid traditions if he doesn't have a job right now? Daoud looked flustered. Oh, that's the adhan. Let's go. We're going to pray right now, okay? I'll talk to you about this later. Muhammad gently nudged his brother along and took him back inside. The boys scurried inside, shutting the door behind them. Hira bird and Shifa bird swooped from above to the composting site and pecked and poked around the dirt for their meal. Hera Bird was puzzled and asked, Why do humans worry so much about money? Don't they know Allah is capable of giving them blessings and increasing their risk? Shifa Bird shrugged, I don't know, maybe they haven't read that verse in the Quran yet, where Allah says He will provide from sources that you could never imagine, and whosoever puts his trust in Allah, then He will be enough for him. Herobert continued to enjoy her meal from the compost pile. Oh, a pistachio! I didn't imagine this could be part of a compost pile. Alhamdulillah! Shifa Bird and Hera Bird returned to their tree branch for an afternoon nap. Now that their tummies were full, they had no worries in the world. The next day around the same time, Daoud and Muhammad slid open their backyard door and came outside once more. They placed their pile of natural scraps of fruit and vegetable peels into the soil for their composting task. As Muhammad did his routinely digging, he heard the fence creak. Aisa, their next-door neighbor, climbed the fence halfway. He peered into Muhammad and Dawood's backyard. Assalamu alaikum! Oh, your mom is still making you guys do that this Ramadan? I thought y'all would have quit after doing it for a week or so. Dawood grinned. I actually like composting. It's pretty cool to watch all our peels and leftovers get mushy and rotten. Then a few days later, you can see worms wriggling out of them. Aisa was intrigued. Yeah, that's cool! He leaned forward to get a better look. Hey, are you guys coming to Muslim Family Day at the theme park? I'm so excited to get an all-day pass and ride on all the big roller coasters. Did your parents decide if you guys will be coming too? He said smiling. Oh, that sounds expensive, Dawood said out loud. Muhammad nudged him with his elbow. Or what he means is, we probably have other plans, Muhammad said quickly. Isa disappeared behind the fence. The boys emptied out their compost pile entirely and headed inside. Muhammad looked disappointed as he took his little brother inside for the Salah. Hera Bird and Shifa Bird swooped in once again and enjoyed their meal with surprises buried deep. Mmm. Mmm. Sounds like the boys are getting more and more worried about their father's job situation. Shifa Bird said, I wish there was some way to help the boys see that Allah provides for all of his creations. Hera Bird agreed. I am loving these seeds that Allah provided for us today. She chirped as she plucked one off of a breadcrumb. 
The next day, Muhammad and Dawood came back to the backyard with a much smaller pile of compost. The birds fluttered nearby watching the boys once again. Are donuts expensive, Muhammad? Dawood asked. No, not really. Why? Muhammad asked his little brother. Oh, okay, so maybe we can still get donuts after Eid prayers, like we always do. If Baba and Mama have enough money for donuts, then at least Eid the morning will still feel special. Muhammad hugged his little brother and said, Daud, Eid is special whether we have donuts or not, presents or not, fancy restaurants or not. Eid will be special because we just completed almost 30 days of fasting in Ramadan. Daud, you and I can even celebrate how we didn't waste food for 30 days thanks to this awesome project, Muhammad said, clanking his gardening tools. Daud jumped and gave his brother a high five. Muhammad crouched near Daud and whispered, Can I tell you a secret, Daud? Daud looked up to his older brother, who was much taller than him, and said, Yes, please tell me. I'll only tell Mama. Muhammad laughed. <laughs> well, you know how it's only a few more nights of Ramadan left, right? Daud nodded his head excitedly. Well, I've been waking up at night with Mama and Baba to pray, and I've been making dua for Baba to find a new job soon. Baba said these special nights in Ramadan are filled with blessings. Inshallah, Baba will find a new job soon, Daud. Don't worry. Daud smiled to his brother and helped him finish the composting job. The boys did their part and made the hole in the ground nice and even. But as they were just about to dump the rest of the compost in the hole, Muhammad stopped. He crouched down. Oh, wait, Daoud, hold on, he called out. I think I found something. We need to get Baba. He's going to love this. Muhammad stuck his hands into the hole and lightly brushed off the dirt from an object. Muhammad used his fingertips so gently to uncover a stained white tooth-shaped mysterious object. Daoud, go, go call Baba. He needs to see this. Daoud zipped inside the house and grabbed his Baba's hand from off the couch. Baba, Baba, Muhammad needs you. He said you have to come see something. Daoud's father didn't look interested. Okay, okay, we can play this game later. I have to go to Wudu right now. Baba, no, this isn't a game. Muhammad needs you. Muhammad and Daoud's Baba finally got off the couch and stood at the doorway of the backyard. He adjusted his glasses to look out to Muhammad. Muhammad, are you and Daoud pretend playing to be at my old job? He said laughing. Muhammad and Daoud's dad worked at a museum as a paleontologist. That means he studied evidence of creatures and organisms that lived in the past. No, no, we're not playing. I, I want you to come see this, Muhammad said with urgency. Muhammad's dad came to the composting pile, chuckling. Muhammad, yes, yes, mashallah, you boys are doing nicely with this composting project that your mama suggested at the beginning of Ramadan. He came close to Muhammad and crouched down to look at what Muhammad was staring at. And when this Baba finally squinted and saw the object, he froze for a second. Wow, subhanAllah, he whispered. Daoud, go get my gloves and work brushes from inside the house. They're on my desk. Daoud returned in a flash with the scientific tools that his Baba needed. Being a scientist or a paleontologist meant that you had to handle things with care. That's why Muhammad's dad slipped on a pair of gloves and held a special thin brush that he used at his old workplace. Muhammad's dad carefully used the brush swiftly over the tooth-shaped object. He crouched all the way down and rested on his belly to work on handling this uncovering. He used his special brush with lots of care. The boys stood in silence. 
Muhammad, Daoud, this is going to sound unbelievable, but I think we have a literal shark tooth fossil in our backyard. I don't want you guys to touch this area right now, okay? I have to call my old workplace and let them know about this treasure of a discovery. This is so amazing, boys. Do you know what this means? They're going to need me back at work for this. I'm going to have a new job. But now I get to work on this job right in our backyard. Subhanallah. I couldn't have even imagined a more perfect solution for us. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Their dad said with so much excitement in his voice, the boys were too shocked to even reply. They let out a breath of relief. <sighs> The boys were beaming with happiness when looking at their father's expression of joy and gratitude. They ran to give their Baba a hug. Hira Bird and Shifa Bird tweeted and chirped happily too from the branch above them. Oh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I just knew they'd receive their risk from Allah from places they couldn't even imagine. I bet the boys will have an even more special Eid this year. With that, the two birds fluttered away to find their next meal. To all my kid listeners out there, if you want to learn more about risk and how Allah provides, be sure to ask your parents and an imam in your community. This story was inspired by a news report that I read about a family that really did uncover fossils in their backyard. Jazakallah khair everyone for tuning into my story on Once Upon a Crescent. Please continue to spread the word, leave a review, and comment your thoughts about this podcast.